Saturday, August 7th is Hambletonian Day at the Meadowlands. Post time is noon. DRF Bets has a 5% rebate on exotic wagers. We have free PPs. We brought along Jay Bergman, and we're going to talk about the Hamiltonian and the Hamiltonian Oaks. We're going to start with the Oaks. It's a 10-horse field. It's race 14 on the card. We're going to take a look at the field right now, and it's a pretty wide-open group, Jay. Uh, absolutely. I, I think we have, uh, you know, over time we've seen the, the, these horses beat each other and uh, certainly on Saturday with $500,000 going on the line, I think uh, we're going to see a lot of horses going for the lead. The morning line favorite here is the five Bella Bellini. We're going to take a look at some video of her winning her, well, finishing second in her elimination behind Lady Chaos. You have that battle to look for. And also number 10, Darlene Hanover finishes really big from the back of the pack to make the final. Uh, no, no question about it. Darlene Hanover, uh, last year's uh, Jim Darty winner, uh, came from very, very far back and was trotting faster than anyone to the wire. Uh, you see Lady Chaos, last year's British Crown winner, hold on for Dave Miller. And on the outside, Bella Bellini, who's been this year's sensation after not really racing last year, uh, finished just a head back. That was the first elimination. We're also going to take a look at the second elimination here where Awesome Tricks just rides up the cones and, you know, gets the win. Piper Hanover, also a horse people are talking about, is having some traffic trouble, number seven. Well, uh, you know, traffic trouble in the sense that there was no real flow. And, uh, you know, for Scott Zeron, he was sort of caught where he was caught. And all of a sudden, the Red Sea opened up in the stretch and uh, allowed him to get through. And um, good, good fortune for him, but the horse had to be good to win. Okay. Let's talk about your top pick here. Your top pick is number six, Piper Hanover. Why did you go this way? You know, I, I think it's about races and drivers, uh, trainers, connections. I mean, Piper Hanover's dam won this race uh, in an upset a few years back. And, you know, Piper Hanover seems like they've, they've just tried to, you know, forge a path to get to this point. Uh, she she looked like she was a sensation a few weeks ago and then was on the front end going cheap fractions and got rolled over. And then you say, well, she's no good. Uh, but I think that they were a little careful in the eliminations not to expose her if she wasn't going to be good. But she actually was good. She just had a, a terrible trip. Now that she drew well in the final, as far as I'm concerned, and Andy McCarthy's not afraid to leave that at the gate. And I think we have a situation here where Lady Chaos is a solid lever, but Bella Bellini is a question mark in my mind. She may be the fastest horse in the race, but she may be the fastest horse in a sprint, fastest horse on a 5 8 mile track. But she seems a little suspect on the big track. Like, they don't want to put her on the front end. And that gives me concern as, a, as being a little bit of an over, overbet horse. And Piper is a horse that I think she can go to the lead or she can come off the pace, which gives Andrew McCarthy uh, a lot more options than Dexter Dunn might have. I did go with Bella Bellini here on the the thought that she is the fastest horse in this race. And I really thought they would be a little bit more aggressive with her and put her on the front. Do you see them trying the front here and seeing if she could last? I, I don't see it. I mean, I think 500000 is too much to ask. And, and, I, and I think that, you know, I mean, listen, I got to throw out last week's loss in the sense that, you know, Dexter Dunn essentially allowed himself to be, you know, compromised by a 57 half and, you know, going up there, I, I I think he went fast a little bit for the third quarter. Didn't want didn't want to toe cover in with them, so he said, "Let me sprint for like from the from the half to the five eighths. But then, you know, when it became a horse race, uh, you know, then it was a question of who who was the who was the horse with more heart. And you know, the fact that she didn't pass Lady Chaos uh, says she's not much better than her. She's in the same class with her. She's not that much better. So I. I I kind of think that that might have been a lesson for for Dexter Dunn. I don't, I, you know, and I don't think if he, even if he went to the front, I don't think she would go unopposed. And I think that that would be another c concern because her best her best efforts, even on the five ace track, have been you know take her take her back a little bit and then let her sprint. And and she is, I think, for an eighth of a mile, she's clearly the fastest filly in the race. I went and looked at, you know, this race closely and somehow I came up with awesome tricks who a lot of people are going to say, oh, you know, everything went right and she, it was a perfect trip for her to win last time. And but when I look at the progression that she's shown, she is she is getting better. I talked to trainer Chris Beaver and he mentioned that they started her out here with no shoes because that's how she was training down down south and it just wasn't working out and they made some changes. It's, could she just be a horse that's peaking at the right time? 
you know, I, I think she can. When I looked at her, I, I just asked myself the question, is she going to be fifth or sixth in the first quarter or is she going to be ninth in the first quarter because they're going to be going 27 seconds? And, you know, because of her gate situation, Sky Sierra is not going to be able to close a hole or keep a hole closed. And if she sacrifices a few spots, I'm kind of worried about her. As far as talent-wise, I, I agree with you. I think the talent is there. I think, you, you know, you, you can run the risk of, of giving her, uh, you know, not enough credit for, for coming up the rail or the pylons. But at the same time, I mean, I am worried about that that first eighth or quarter of a mile. And if she loses a couple of spots or has to allow horses in front of her, that makes the job a lot harder. In that awesome tricks win, it, it kind of looked like Hot as Hill was going to roll by at one point, and she just completely hung. I heard she's going to get some equipment changes. Do you see her as a horse that's progressing in, in a forward way? Uh, well, considering that I bet her last week and I thought she was going to win at the at the head of the stretch, and, and she she couldn't even get up for second. Uh, and they ch and they took the shoes off last week, so I don't know what equipment changes they're making. But I thought the taking the shoes off angle was the angle that said, "Okay, now's the night," and the trip worked out perfectly for her. And I thought she hung, and I seen her hang a few times before. So I mean, they can take her all they want. Uh, they, I, they've lost me as a as a as a follower. So Jay's going to go with Piper Hanover in the five hundred thousand dollar Hamiltonian Oaks race number fourteen. I'm going to take the presumptive favorite. Number five, Bella Bellini, and we're going to move on to the Hamiltonian. It's race number 15 on the card. $1 million is on the line. Full field of 10 here. And if the Hamiltonian Oaks is wide open, most people would say the Hamiltonian is even more wide open. I, I couldn't agree more. I mean, this year, I, I just got off the phone with Dexter Dunn, who had a big decision to make with really fast. And, you know, he, he kind of said the same thing. It's like, you know, it, it, he had to have, he had a toss up between a, a, an elimination winner and a, and a horse that finished second, took the horse that finished second. So, you know, he's even he was, in, you know, enamored by by just having a win. So I, I think that there's definitely a, a lot of horses in this race to get win. Well, speaking of his elimination winner, we're going to take a look at the first limb replay from last week. Delayed hound of a burst home. And another thing to watch here is number six, son of a mystery, who gets stuck in heavy traffic and clearly had trot left. Uh, I, I agree with you on son of a mystery. I mean, I, I even going to give a lot of credit to Quattro de Julio, the horse on the lead, because, you know, there was a point in the stretch that looked like he could have been third or fourth. And, you know, when when, when Ambassador Hanover comes up to him, it looks like he drives on a little bit. Uh, son of a mystery... Uh, a mystery to me. I mean, three weeks ago, four weeks ago, he was, you know, looked like he was going to be a top horse. And then a couple of bad races, a better race on Saturday. No doubt about it, a better race. And we're going to take a look at the second Hamiltonian elimination from last week. Captain Corey completely dominated, but everyone was kind of gaining on him late. Was he shut down? Does he improve? What are your thoughts? Uh, my thoughts are he'll see a totally different race in the Hamiltonian than he saw in the eliminations. My thoughts are if he's given an easy lead at any point in time, he's a very, very dangerous horse. But I, I cannot imagine that being the case on Saturday. I think he had an easy lead here. He had some protection with his stable mate leaving the gate. I think is a question of w whether he can see that kind of trip again. I mean, looking up and down this field, I saw this race as a speed race where I looked at it as – Captain Corey's going to leave. Uh, his stable mate, Ambassador Hanover, is going to leave. Also, getting an interesting driver change to Scott Zeron. I thought Son of a Mystery would definitely be firing out. I kind of thought that this race would work out where those three horses would dominate to some extent early on in the race. Whereas you looked at this more as a closers race with the selections you went with, take goal comers and really fast. Well, here's here's the way I mapped it out, Derek. And you know, we we talked about this beforehand about. You know, Scott Zeron getting up on Ambassador Hanover, who I think probably is the worst of the three, at least the least talented of the three horses in, this, in, in the uh, Sponsted uh, uncoupled entry. But at the same time, I think he's got the he's got blast off speed. And I think the problem with the three horses that Sponsted has, specifically Captain Corey, is that I don't think Captain Corey has the blast off speed. He's already broken at the start. So I think that was a, a maybe a test that that uh, Aki gave him, a, you know, a few weeks ago, and he failed that test. So getting away slowly and, and grinding to the lead is what is what Captain Corey did last week. This week, 
I don't think that's going to be an option for him because I don't think he's going to get close to the lead with Captain Corey. I think if Ambassador leaves hard, the late Hannibal leaves hard, and as you suggested, son of a mystery would probably be a, a horse leaving. Brian Sears has plenty of experience in this race, and he doesn't want to get caught where he got caught last week. So I, I kind of think there might be a situation where Captain Corey gets hung out to dry as opposed to – waltzes to the lead and gets a gets an easy quarter or an easy half. And with that in mind, if he's if he's out there, I, I have to think there's going to be accelerated pace. As long as it's not three spots that horses one, two, and three, I have to see there's going to be a pace in this race. And, you know, if that's the case, then I think it, it just it compromises the speed enough and opens the door for closers. In a million-dollar race, though, is there really the chance that you know, someone's going to just let Oki go just because they're racing the same horse as him. Let's say it's Scott Zeron. You know, there's a million dollars on the line. I think I spoke to Yannick Jingra the other day, and he told me if it was my mother coming on the outside for a million dollars, I'm parking her. <laughs> no, no, I, I'm, I'm, I'm actually in agreement on that. What I'm saying is that's what I think is compromising Captain Corey here. I mean, we talked about. I mean, Captain Corey from the moment he set on a track last year in in a, in a two year old race, I said, "Well, this is like the greatest horse I've ever seen." You know, I, I mean, I sort of lost that opinion in last year's Breeders' Crown because he he did not win it and he did not dominate. And I. I look at last week's race and I'm saying I'm not convinced he's a dominant horse simply because he got the front and no one came at him. I mean, someone's got to first come at him to prove that he's a dominant horse, not just go on your own and, and no one gets near you. And I think, you know, you, you mentioned that a horse like Venerate last week, uh, Andy Miller has been very, very calm in the bike, not getting excited, not not doing anything, you know, aggressive with Venerate to get to this point. I mean, this is last year's million, you know, uh, Mohawk million winner. He's no slouch. I mean, outside post or not, I got to think he's going to be more aggressive than getting away 10th or 9th. So, I mean, I kind of think there are other guys who are going to want to get in front of Aki. And that's what and that's what I'm saying. The first turn, if if you don't have a, a sprinter in Captain Corey, there's going to be other horses in the way. And I just think that that's, that's going to pose a problem. And Captain Corey is going to have to rough it. And I just question about that because I haven't seen him rough it and win a race. I've seen him trip out and win a race. I've seen him on the front end, you know, dominate, but I haven't seen him rough it. And that's a worry to me. And like I said, a horse like really fast who Dexter Dunn is taking, he roughed it last week. I mean, he roughed it and he was still trotting. And, you know, we've talked about this, about the Tactor factor. Uh, you know, Jimmy Tactor and his daughter Nancy have tremendous experience uh, plotting a course and getting to the first, you know, Saturday in August uh, in pre in peak condition. I think really fast is is certainly a prime example of that. No doubt about it. And uh, Venerate, I, I spoke to trainer Julie Miller. They, she said she's going to change the um, bridle, go from open to can't see back cup. So maybe that changes a little bit for Venerate. Obviously, still has some problems in the turn. I'll have to deal with that. For me, I, I just to recap, I went with Son of a Mystery here. I think he's got sprinter speed away from the gate. I think that he's fine getting cover. Even if I'm sitting in three holes, as long as I find room, I think he's fast enough to pass these. And I'm going off the assumption that he's passed his issues. You know, obviously, they could come back and haunt him, and he could make a break in the stretch like he, he was. But he seems better from what I've seen, so that's the way I went on top. You went with take all comers. Why don't you tell us why? Well, I mean, I, that was even before talking to Dave Miller and uh, yesterday that I went with take all comers. And, I, you know, I just feel like there's been a progression with this horse. There's, there's been a progression of showing some speed. There's been a progression of, of racing against the, the, the quality horses and, and not disgracing himself, maybe not winning. But, you know, it's, it's like I look at it and say when there's a guy with one horse – you got to be very careful when three or four. I mean, when you look at Melanders or Sponsteads, they got five, six, eight horses out there. They can be testing every week, going at full speed to see which which their best horse are. But when you have one horse like Jim Campbell has with Take All Comers, you got to be a little bit more careful about you know how much stress you put on a horse a particular week. And I think everything that I've seen with this horse is the last few weeks have been better and better and better. I thought he had talent as a two year old, but just wasn't ready. But he's got a family that that works his his sister uh, next level stuff. Obviously, won last year's Breeders' Crown. Uh, you know, is a contender in the Steel on on Saturday. So there's this family there. there, there there's a, a horse that stays flat. A horse that seems like he's always coming at the end of a mile. And you know, I see this as a wide open group of horses. I don't see it as uh, you know having any real star. So 
I don't see one horse being incredibly faster. I think, you know, we've seen obviously how fast Son of a Mystery is, but I don't assume, you know, given off the trip Take All, uh, take all Comers had this week, I thought Take All Comers was great last week with, with no flow at all. Horse was trotting right through the wire. It wasn't, you know, it was a 52 mile. I, I mean, I see a 51 mile on Saturday. I don't really see a, a much faster mile in 51 of these horses. I think that's where they go. And I think Take All Comers can go with 51. Well, the $1 million Hamiltonian post time is set for about 6, 12 p.m. You can bet it all on DRF bets with a 5% rebate. Get some free harness IPPs from DRF. We wish everyone the best of luck on Hamiltonian Day. Post time's noon. Have a good day.